Kelly, and uh, he is a deep thinker and understands objectivism well. And he can explain the non-initiation of force principle, which anarchists call NAP. They call it uh, non-aggression principle. And also, uh, what he thinks about anarchism and whether it's a good social organization or not, and why. Okay, well, the, the non-aggression principle, as it's now known, um, it, uh, was certainly something that Ayn Rand um, adopted. And her point was that physical force, the initiation of physical force, is the only way in which individual rights can be violated. So you have to start with the fact of rights. Um, and it, the existence, our need for the right to live, to think, to be free, and to own property, those rights are based on needs of human nature as it applies to a social context. And then, as when you observe that initiating force against someone in the form of an assault or theft or whatever um, violates their rights, then, that, then we, we have to ban that. We have to do everything we can to remove that as a threat from a society. And how do we do that? The objectivists hold that we do need a government institution to do that uh, for two reasons. One, that when you uh, fight against someone who's initiating force, whether it's a domestic criminal or a foreign invader, you need to use force in retaliation or in punishment in the case of criminals. But force is inherently a dangerous thing. It's, it must be subjected to the rule of law. But you can't have a legal system without someone to frame the laws, a mechanism for creating the laws and enforcing them, which brings us to the second reason we need to have, be able to enforce those laws um, through an entity that has exclusive power to do so. Because if there are multiple entities, as anarchists imagine, then they themselves can be at war. My protection agency may, I, I think you stole something from me, my protection agency, um, goes to collect from you, your protected agency says, no, you didn't. We ultimately, I know there are very sophisticated analyses on the part that come from uh, anarcho-capitalists to deal with those situations. But at the end of the day, if there is no ultimate court of appeal whose word is final on a given issue, um, you're not going to resolve it. That said, I'm all in favor of privatizing any aspects of the rights protection that we can in the form of guards, um, arbitration panels. A lot of things can be handled by contract that way. And as long as the contracts are enforceable, then great. Because I, I agree with a lot of what anarchists write about the inefficiency of government um, as a monopoly you know, exclusive provider of a service. Well, let me, uh, th you've done a very great uh, explanation and uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I did want you to address one thing that uh, the anarchists, anarchists uh, uh, claim and argue, which is that uh, when the government uh, requires them to do anything, they're usually talking about taxes, but anything, that they are initiating force because they didn't agree to be part of the government, they didn't sign a contract, and uh, they would like to be just left alone. Mm -hmm. And why can't we just uh, leave them alone and let them f not follow the law? And why do we insist on violating NAP and uh, uh, doing aggression against them uh, when they haven't done anything to anyone? Well, if, if they simply don't um, have it, are not doing anything to anybody, not violating anyone's rights. No one's going to bother them in a proper society. 
Well, it, they will have to pay taxes, though. But taxes, um, this is this is a difficult issue, um, and the if there if there is a case to be made, and I think it is a, a overwhelming case for having a government, then you need to figure out how to fund it. Ayn Rand thought it should be vol funded voluntarily. I know. So that would be, I think, consistent with what the anarchists are, are claiming here. Uh, I doubt that's the case. I agree with you. I don't agree with her. But let me put it this way. 